Welcome back. Uh, and we're on to how does evolution happen. So if you remember from the last video where we left off, we talked about how there has to be some type of process that makes the genes, the percentage of genes in a gene pool change from one generation to the next. And there are five of those processes. Again, these are based off of the um, Five Fingers of Evolution video. If you need to, make sure you go back and review that. But just quick overview, shrinking populations, non-random mating mutations, genetic, mu genetic movement, and natural selection were those five factors. We're gonna break each of them down in a video. Uh, this video is for uh, shrinking populations. So shrinking populations is a concept that random events that occur in the world can cause populations to go from being much larger to very, very small. And what's called, a, in this case, it's called a catastrophic event. This flow is called bottlenecking. And um, what happens after a bottleneck is called a founder's effect, but we'll talk about that one later. Uh, so basically what happens is, is the, the great complexity and diversity of an entire population gets simplified down to just the survivors of this catastrophic event. And that changes the gene frequency. Again, look at the picture. If from up here to down here, there is a change of the gene frequency. A bunch of genes were lost. And so this is a change from that. So evolution has occurred because the chair is a change in the gene pool. Um, and again, the most important thing to remember about shrinking populations is this is because of random processes. Again, I love this example of these um, gumballs in a gumball machine. The color of gumball, they put them all in there evenly, but the ones you get out are by random choice. And by random choice, you could miss out on a color or flavor of uh, gumballs. Some could be overexpressed, some could be underexpressed, some could be not expressed at all. But if there's a change from the original population that went in through this bottleneck to the new population, that change in allele frequency over time is evolution, even though it's happening from a random process. And so this process of having the evolution uh, population shrink drives evolution because it has a significant effect on that gene pool. And so again, as that gene pool gets smaller, random effects are more likely to change the gene frequency. Uh, think about coin flips. If you flip a coin four times, it might end up being a 50-50 like it should, but it also might end up being 75-25 or 100-100, uh, 100% zero. But that becomes a less and less of a probability the larger and larger the numbers get. So that's how random events like a coin flip affects small populations much more significantly than larger populations. If you wanted to flip a coin 200,000 times, your number would be pretty near 50-50, if not exactly 50-50 at that point. But in a small population, it's very easy to have those numbers thrown off significantly. So here's an example, cheetah poaching. During the late 1800s, early 1900s, cheetah populations were decimated from poaching. That was their catastrophic events. The cheetahs that were left had to interbreed so, so much that they are actually more genetically alike than the lab mice that we use to um, as controls on experiments. So it makes them very susceptible to diseases because if there was any resistance in the population up here, some of them don't exist anymore. They lost those genes. This version of the cheetah that we have, the modern cheetah, is a very different version than the one that was on the planet 100, 200 years ago. 200 years ago, 100 on the word. Um, another F, uh, example is the FLDS had a closed community out at Short Creek, the Hilldale, Colorado City area. And over that time, what happened is basically everyone in that community, well, most of the people in that community were either um, were blood relatives of one of these two people, and there was a rare genetic disorder inside that small population. The random chance of that showing up increased so much that there were only this uh, fermiase deficiency, which is... Uh, it's a problem with making energy from glucose. So we just say, hey, you eat sugar, you get energy. Well, that's not true for people with this deficiency. And so they end up being physically and mentally disabled because they can't produce enough energy to function properly. There were 13 cases of this worldwide, but now there are over 20 recorded cases just in the Short Creek area. And so it's just another example of how a small community, a random chance, can happen in a significantly higher numbers just because there's a small population.